Today on BRS TV, we're going to show you how to set up a bubble tip and enemy propagation system. Hi, I'm Ryan R.T. Turner, today's host of BRS TV's How To's, where every Tuesday we release a new reefing related how to. This week, we're going to show you how to set up your own bubble tip and enemy fragging system and show you some tips on how to make it a profitable endeavor. The first thing you should know is propagating bubble tips is as easy as cutting them in half, letting them grow out, chopping them in half again, and so on. For you queasy folks out there, this may seem a little mean, but this is one of the natural ways they reproduce in the wild. In fact, a sharp knife is probably likely to be much more effective than tearing themselves in half like they would in the ocean. I'm also sure that they're pretty happy that your propagation efforts reduce the demand for the wild harvesting of their cousins from the ocean. Setting up a system for this can consist of basically any tank, preferably with no overflow, and pumps which are as anemone safe as possible. We're going to use these large hydroponic trays. You don't really need the stand, however it's just nice because you can wheel it around and it comes with a bar where you can hang the lighting. The cheapest place to get a set like this would be a local hydroponic shop because shipping is a killer on something this large. For convenience, however, we do have them on our site. One of the things that makes this tray nice is it has a high volume of working surface versus volume of water. This will allow us to grow out a ton of bubble tips while making sure water changes and other maintenance is really simple. The smooth surface also allows you to remove the bubble tips pretty easily. For filtration, we're going to use these Marine Pier biospheres. I use five gallons of them here, and these spheres serve two purposes. First, they provide a ridiculous amount of filtration surface. One single sphere has over 240 square feet of available surface for filtration. The five gallons contain somewhere over 100,000 feet of surface area. That's close to two football fields. What makes this media different than most other products like this is the availability of the internal pour network. I silicone this plumbing fitting to the top of the 4 inch thick marine pier block. You can see how the water just passes right through the entire thing. It's pretty amazing. The second component the spheres serve is for something the bubble tips to bury their feet into, which is also very easy to remove them from. You could use rubble or something similar, which is a lot less expensive, but they're much harder to remove from this irregular shaped material, and you can easily damage their foot trying. I'm a big fan of these low-profile Neotherm heaters, so I'll throw in a couple of these, and for pumps, I'm going to use two of the MJ1200s with pre-filters and high-door rotating heads. I'm also going to put some rubber bands around the filters to keep them on and prevent the bubble tips from squeezing into the intake. While not 100% foolproof, this is about as anemone safe as a pump can get. You can also use a wave maker or a couple of digital timers on these pumps to get the flow randomized a bit. Other than that, all you need is some lighting. Really, you can just use about anything, but I'm going to go with a pair of Kessel LEDs. These pendants are about as versatile as they come and have amongst the lowest cost per LED out there, which makes them perfect for a project like this. In addition, they're small, so they stay out of the way when you're working in the tank. All that's left to do now is cycle the tank, add a couple fish, and then add your first batch of bubble tips. You can start with as little as one, but the more you start with, the faster you'll get the system up to speed. Most bubble tips can be divided every four to six weeks, so one turns into two, two into four, four into eight, to 16, 32, 64, and so on. Doing that math, you could be producing a thousand a month inside a year if you had the space and zero mortalities. Okay, so you don't have that much space, and you'll have some mortalities, but you get the point. Slicing them is pretty simple. The guys at Ecotech sent us one of their propagation kits to play with, so I'm going to be using the bamboo cutting board surface that doubles as the case. I'm not going to lie and say this thing is cheap, but if you do have some extra money burning a hole in your pocket, it is pretty nice. These things are pretty hardy, and I've seen this done a hundred different ways, but the general consensus is the best way is to start by spreading the tentacles out and then slicing it right down the middle. This means I want to go right through the center of the mouth and divide both the top and the foot evenly. I'm going to use one of these paint scraping razor blades because it has a long, ultra sharp edge. There are two things I want to try and avoid. First, I don't want to crush the bubble tip by pushing down because this will bruise the tissue and make it harder for the bubble tip to heal. Second, if possible, try and do it in one smooth slicing motion which will prevent you from creating multiple wounds. If you don't make it through the tissue with one pass, don't just start over. Reverse the motion and attempt to stay within the same cutting line. Once it's done, put it in a storage bowl or tank while you do the rest. Once they're back in the tank, give them a week or two to completely heal and start feeding them. You can feed them anything from pellets to mysis. I personally prefer the Hikari Jumbo Mysis, but if you don't have access to frozen foods, the freeze-dried krill soaked in Selcon make an excellent option. Don't go crazy with the food, because they only need one or two each. More than that, and they often spit it out a few hours later. 
A handful of weeks later, they should be the same size as when you first divided them, and they should be ready to start that process all over again. Okay, so how do you sell them? The easiest and most consistent way is to actually supply your local store. Getting into a store can be some work. This is a business designed to make money and support families' incomes, so they need to have a reliable supplier. The first step is to go to all the stores with some of your products, tell them how many you're capable of producing a month, and show them some of what you have for sale. Hopefully, they'll be in right away, but if they aren't, be polite, thank them for their time, and come back again next month like this never happened. If they shoot you down again, do the same thing and come back in another month. But this time, if they say no, be prepared to give them a deal they can't refuse. Like, here's a bunch for free. This is all about goodwill and building long-term relationships. Also make sure to point out all the elements which make your product better than their other suppliers. Like free delivery, almost zero mortality at their store because they're all grown in captivity, and they've only been in transport for an hour rather than flown around the world, country, and even stored in five different tanks along the way before they reach the end user. Some may also appreciate the sustainable approach that you're offering. Lastly, you might have noticed that I did add some fish to this system. While this isn't critical, it doesn't hurt, and many people think tanks like this stay more stable long-term with fish. If you have any questions about this or tips for other reefers, check out the comments area down below. If this is your first time with us, hit that subscribe button because we do new how-to projects like this every Tuesday. See you all next week with another episode of BRS TV.